Hello, good morning students, myself Dr. K. M. Khalkar, Department of Botany, KTGM College, Nasik. So students, in the last week, we have covered the topic, the chapter 4th one, that is the development of dicot and monocot embryo, in which we have covered the points like as the definition of embryo, structure of dicot embryo, structure of monocot embryo and the development of monocot and dicot embryo. So friend, in this week, we start the next one chapter, fifth one chapter and that is the development of endosperm. Here we will consider like that the definition of endosperm, then the development of endosperm, how the endosperm is developed. First, we considered that is the, what is this endosperm? Endosperm are a very vital part of fertilized embryo and endosperm form the surrounding tissue of the growing embryo. Yes. Towards the growing embryo, the surrounding tissue which is covered the embryo is the endosperm and the endosperm are the primary storage tissue and their main function is to provide starch and other nutrient to the growing embryo. Yes, that is the food for the developing embryo we will say here. So, simply we will define the endosperm as endosperm is a nutritive tissue found in a seed of nearly all the flowering plant after fertilization or endosperm are the primary storage tissue and their main function is to provide starch and the other nutrient to the growing embryo. The endosperm is normally formed in the process of double fertilization. So, all these are the introductory part or we will say the definitions of the endosperm. Simply, endosperm is the reserved food material for the growing embryo, we will say here. Then the next one point, depending on the utilization of endosperm, there are two types of the seeds. Yes, how the endosperm is utilized. On the basis of that, there are two types of the seeds are there. We will say albuminous seed, ex-albuminous seed. The first one, albuminous seeds, the endosperm provide nutrition to the developing embryo but remain even during the germination of the seed. Means, this albuminous seed is the seed in which the endosperm provide nutrition to the developing embryo but remain even during the germination of a seeds. Means that endosperm is remain up to the germination of the seed. That type of the seed is the albuminous seed and the second one is the ex-albuminous seed. In ex-albuminous seed, the seed utilizes the endosperm completely, thus the, the seeds are non-endospermic in nature. Means at the time of development of embryo, all the endosperm are utilized there for the growth of embryo in the seed and that seed become non-endospermic in nature. Means in the seed, there is no endosperm, only embryo is there for the proper growth of the embryo, all endospermic materials are used there. Such a type of the seed is known as the ex-albuminous seed. So, on the basis of utilization of endosperm, there are two types of the seed. Simply, we will say albuminous seed and second one ex-albuminous or we also say a non-albuminous seed is there. Then the next one point related to the endosperm types of endosperm. We will say here there are three types of endosperm that are nuclear endosperm, 
cellular endosperm and the helobial endosperm is there okay before but understanding this type we need to understand what gives rise to the endosperm for end we see in the development of the male gametophyte female gametophyte the after fertilization formation of zygote formation of embryo is there and in that we saw already saw that a pollen grain consists of two male gamete when we are considering the single pollen grain there is the presence of two male gamete one they reach the ovary of the male gamete and fuses with the female gamete and form the zygote means out of the two we will say the gamete the when we are considering the pollen grain consist of two male gamete out of that two male gamete one male gamete fuses with the female gamete and there is the formation of zygote the other male gamete fuses with the central cell which is diploid resulting in the formation of diploid endosperm yes means one male gamete fuses with female gamete formation of zygote and second male gamete fuses with central cell which is diploid resulting in formation of triploid endosperm and thus the endosperm can be polyploid as well in certain cases but in gymnosperm the endosperm is haploid the endosperm is haploid in gymnosperm in angiosperm the endosperm is diploid okay so this is about the formations of the endosperm is there and this phenomena formation of zygote formation of endosperm is the double fertilization generally this phenomenon is called as the double fertilization so these are the three type of the endosperm nuclear endosperm cellular endosperm helobial endosperm how they are formed how the zygote is formed and such a phenomenon is simply we will say a double fertilization is there we will consider here one by one endosperm and their development is there first one we will consider the nuclear endosperm the cell division are free nuclear division where each cell division is not followed by formation of cell wall they may or may not be form a cell wall towards the later stages and with the cell division the nuclei are pushed towards the periphery of the sac and giving rise to a large vacuole in the central yes this one is the phenomena in the development of the nuclear endosperm the nuclear endosperm cell divisions are free nuclear division yes the cell division which will be takes place they are free free nuclear divisions are there and that free nucleogens there free nucleogen free nuclear division where each cell division is not followed by the formation of cell wall and they may or may not be form a cell wall towards the later stages and with the cell division the nuclei are pushes towards the periphery and the center there is the formation of vacuole in the center and that the best example that is the maize endosperm coconut endosperm is there so that are the best example here in figure we will see here uh, um, clearly that how the formations of the endosperm nuclear endosperm is takes place there means that each nuclei they are pushes towards the periphery and there is the in at the center there is the formations of large vacuole and such a type of the development is takes place in the nuclear endosperm is there these all the are the different five stages of the development of nuclear type of the endosperm is there then the second one type of the endosperm is the cellular endosperm and the cellular endosperm or this type of the endosperm is opposite of the nuclear endosperm in this type the cell wall formation follow each cell division yes each cell division there is the formation of cell wall in first one when we are considering the first one in nuclear endosperm maybe may not be formations of the cell wall is there but here 
each cell division there is the formation of cell wall and thus the endosperm divide into many segment and there might not be a coherency in the division and they can happen along different planes and the best example is the petunia and the datura is there in which there is the formation of the cellular endosperm and cellular endosperm we will simply say opposite to the nuclear endosperm the cell wall formation follow each cell division that is the important point is here the cell wall formation follows each cell division and the endosperm divides into many segment and there might not be a coherency in the division and they can happen along a different planes are there so in figure we will completely see in here like this is the cellular type of the endosperm in which each and every there is the formation of cell wall and formation of the segment is there so these are the simply a development of the cellular endosperm uh, which is totally we will say opposite to the nuclear endosperm is there and the third one type is the helobial endosperm this helobial endosperm is very interesting it is intermediate between the first two that is the nuclear and cellular endosperm means neither formations of the cell wall not we will say a single are there towards the periphery are there this is an intermediate form between the other two types in this type cell wall formation follow the first cell division in the first cell division there is the formation of cell wall but the subsequent division do not lead to cell wall formation and the first cell division occur along with the transfer plane giving rise to a clear micropylar or chalagel end means they are clear they are formed towards the micropylar and the chalagel end and the subsequent division after the first often occur in the micropylar end once the number of the division in the micropylar end begins to increase the chalagel end start to degenerate or, or disintegrate is there so this one we will say a simply one the helobial type of the development of the endosperm is there so this is we will say in which we will clearly see the development of the helobial type of the endosperm is there toward the micropylar end and toward the chalazel end they are totally opposite then the first two ones are there neither nuclear nor we will say cellular is there the helobial is somewhat like as the nuclear somewhat like as the cellular is there so this one we will say a development of the helobial type of the endosperm are there so the, up to this point we have covered the three type of the endosperm nuclear endosperm cellular endosperm and the helobial endosperm and how the development of this endosperm is takes place there then the next one point related to our this chapter that is the role of endosperm why the endosperm is form there what is the role of endosperm is development of the seed is there or in seed development in some group of the endosperm persist the mature seed stage as the storage tissue yes generally the development or the formations of the endo endosperm which is considered as a storage tissue storage tissue it may be for the growth of the embryo is there may be albuminous may be ex albuminous is there but that the endosperm which will be play an important role there as a storage tissue the storage function is distributed between both endosperm and the embryo is there they are we will say storage function is distributed between the both the endosperm and the embryo some mature endosperm tissue stores fats like as the castor bean resinous communis in marathi we will say air and is there in which in the seed they are oily the endospermic tissues are there and other including the grains such as the wheat and the corn store mainly the star starches means some seed store the fats as the endosperm some seed store the starch as the endosperm is there but both they are the storage tissue they are we will say uh, uh, we will say that is the reserve food material or the nutrient for the growth of embryo for the germination of seed is there etc is there that is the role of endosperm is there and the next one point that is the 
histology of endosperm is there what is the histology what is the cell structure of the endosperm is there the cells of endosperm are generally isodiametric and stored food material in them yes generally the cell structure or the cell of the endosperm are generally isodiametric and stored food material in them in grasses in monocotyledon and some other plant the peripheral layer of the endosperm acts like as the cambium and produces on its inside a series of thin walled cells which become filled up with starch yes in grasses or in some other plant the peripheral layer of the endosperm they are acts like a cambium in dicot and produces on its inside a series of thin walled cells which become filled with uh, starch is there yes means they are the cambium with the help of that the growth which will be takes place there and it produces inside a series of thin walled cells which become filled with a uh, starch is there on maturations of the seed outermost layer ceases to divide and its cells become filled with alluvium grains and the walls become somewhat thickened is there yes on the maturation seed outermost layer ceases and divide to its cells become filled with alluvium grains and that become a somewhat thickened with the help of that they are protective in their function according to the haverland in 19 14 the chief function of this alluvium layer is secretion of dietase and the other enzymes these are the to secrete a different type of the enzymes are there it may be of dietase or it may be of other enzymes and the wall of the cells are thin and divides of uh, pits are there so all these are the we will say simply the histology of the endosperm is there so friend this one all the points related to the endosperm is there the growth is there so this one is the short we will consider here what is in by the endosperm type of the endosperm and the development of the endosperm okay thank you